next our next uh, round is actually we're gonna we're gonna play nice. Here we go. We're gonna ask a few personal questions, and each candidate will have one minute to respond. And the first question uh, is going to be: What one thing do you admire about each of your opponents, both personally and professionally, Judge Bagneris? When you look at your opponents. Uh. I believe that uh, Constable Cantrell is a very, very good mother. I've seen her interact, uh, at least with her daughter, and um, I think she's a very good mother. And for Judge Charbonnet? She has great taste in shoes. <laughs> Councilman Cantrell. I would say that um, for Judge Bagneris, uh, he has a great sense of humor. Um, he knows how to um, not just make you laugh, but it, it, it's just a great sense of humor, and that's always needed, uh, particularly in community. You need someone to make you laugh and give you, give you hope. Uh, in regards to um, uh, Ms. Charbonnet, um, she's a very nice dresser. She, she's, um, I've learned that um, she worked in retail, and it really does show. And how about we also said both personally and professionally. How about something professionally you would either of you admires? About professionally, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, in regards to um, Ms. Charbonnet, mm -hmm. uh, her uh, work uh, in municipal court in terms of the diversion program and working, I, I'm, you know, being nationally recognized, um, you know, after. Uh, 20 years in elected office, I think, you know, it's great. Okay. Judge Charbonnet. So for um, the council member, I would say that, um, you know, her work in, her de in, in Broadmoor um, speaks for itself, and I think she did a great job professionally where that's concerned. And um, I, too, know her um, not well, but I do understand her to be a, a very good family person, mother. Okay, what would you say about Mr. Bagneris? Hmm. <laughs> Well, I would say personally, I think he has a very lovely wife who has stood by him um, and is very supportive on a personal level. Um, on a professional level, I believe ju the judge um, in his day was a good judge at civil court. Okay, thank you very much. What is the greatest adversity personally that you have ever overcome? We're going to start with Councilwoman, uh, all right, Judge Bagneris. The greatest adversity? Yes, sir. That you've personally overcome. Uh, having to deal with the um, having to deal with the constant stress uh, and worry and fear when I learned that uh, one of my daughters were born with a hole in the heart. That was imagine. personally difficult to do. Councilman Cantrell. Um, the. Uh, in terms of adversity, I would say, you know, when when my neighborhood and was devastated post Katrina and was recommended to the mayor not to be rebuilt, um, but having to listen and build consensus and deliver results, you know, was standing up against, you know, against a lot of adversity there. The greatest adversity you've personally overcome, Judge personally overcome. Um, there are certain things that I've personally overcome that um, the greatest greatest is, is a little too emotional for me to discuss publicly. But I will say this, that um, watching and helping both my mother with breast cancer twice, my sister with breast cancer once, and caring for them and watching the struggles uh, that they went through and um, just trying to be there, it was um, it was a lot of work, but it was good work, and it's heartfelt work, and I am so glad that I can say that today that they both survived it. Um, so that's probably one of the biggest adversities that's closest to me. Glad for your family. Mm -hmm. We asked a lot. Of, all right, we're going to move on. We're actually going to move on to a short answer, and uh, this round is going to have a series of questions, and it'll be yes or no, or again, very short, might be a grade. Uh, keep it as short as you can. We're going to ask them of all of you. All right, our first question is going to be, would you keep Mayor Landrieu's deputy mayor system in place along with its six-figure salaries? Uh, uh, Judge Charbonnet. Yeah. Yes. 
they went out of order my ears. <laughs> would, you, would you keep them in place, the, the no, deputy mayor? No, I don't have any intention on keeping them in place. I do want to look no. at why he placed them there, but Jen, I, I don't believe I'm going that route at all. Councilman Kendra. Oh, absolutely not. I'm going to be focused on really building up the middle management of city government, which really makes it run. All right, no, no, Judge Bagneris? Absolutely not. All right, there you go, some consensus. Should the traffic and speed cameras be suspended even in light of the roughly $25 million in revenue they generate? Uh, Judge Bagneris. They should go except for school zones. All right. Uh, they should definitely go and it's not generating $25 million. All right, go all of them. Ca no traffic caveats. cameras okay. should go. Those gotcha. that were started previous to the second wave, uh, the revenue has decreased significantly, which actually led, in my opinion, this administration putting more out there for okay. people. Judge Charbonnet, should they go? Well, I think that we need to find out whether some of those are actually providing more safety for the city. They should go when we can build up the police department who can then patrol for traffic violations once again. So as we move in our new police officers and um, rank, up, rank up the numbers, then slowly we can get rid of them. So stay for the moment. All right, given the debate over short-term rentals, have you ever stayed at an Airbnb or rented out your own property? Judge Charbonnet. Stayed in Airbnb here? In general. In general. And then we can get specific, sure. I, um, I stayed in an Airbnb with my sister when I went to, um, to Boston to see my, my niece graduate from Harvard Law School. And um, it was nice. It was in a really lovely neighborhood. Um, and it was fine. I didn't officially rent it. She paid for it, actually. But okay. I have never rented out my home, no, All right. for those purposes. Je uh, Councilwoman Cantrell. Um, I have stayed at uh, Airbnbs or short-term rentals, uh, not in the city of New Orleans. And no, I have not rented out my my property for those purposes. Judge Bagneris. No, haven't stayed in one and uh, haven't rented my property out, uh, although I'm thinking about it. No. <laughs> the, uh, and, the, uh, and the $25 million, by the way, came from this administration, the estimate for 2018. All right, we're going to revisit um, the Confederate Monument uh, issue. Would you support efforts to rename schools and streets bearing Confederate era names? Uh, Judge Bagneris. I'm on record a zillion times as saying anything dealing with the monuments or renaming of streets or anything of that nature, I would put to the people to vote. That is one of the things that cause a wedge uh, in our community, so I would let the people vote on it. How would you vote? I as think the vote is sacred. I think your vote is sacred. I would ask you how you vote going down a whole list of things and you have a right to say no and you should say no. That's why we have, that's why we have the secret ballot and, and I, I intend to honor that particular tradition and value that our government recognizes. I do absolutely respect that. I just think a lot of people might be curious as to where you stand on this issue mm -hmm. in particular personally. Councilwoman Cantrell. You know, I would work with the uh, city council who ultimately has the authority. I do not believe in top down, I believe in bottom up. So it would have to come from the community through the New Orleans City Council. Okay, and again, I'm gonna ask each of you, mm -hmm. how do you, do you have a personal opinion you feel comfortable sharing? About? About whether or not, we, if uh, you would support efforts to rename schools and streets. If those efforts came again from the bottom up and through a process uh, administered by the New Orleans City Council, it's what the people want. It's their buildings. Got it's you. their facilities. Judge. I think we need a pause on some of this right now. It has caused so much division in this community. I think what we need to do is start getting some progress going so that people see that their government is working for them in other ways. And then at the pro at appropriate time, allow the city council, which where that is where the, the power lies, to get with their communities and decide how they'd like to go about that. But uh, for now, I think we need to just pump the brakes because we need to come up for air after everything that's happened. This debate has flown by. All of the rounds are now over, and we are going to give time for closing statements to the candidates. Each of you will have one minute, and the order was determined by a random drawing. And we will begin with Judge Charbonnet. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone involved with this debate tonight, and just let you know that 
You know, I have been in this community for more than 20 years serving you as an elected official, first as a recorder of mortgages for 10 years, and then as a judge for the next 10 years where I was nationally recognized for my work in diversion. I have put forth comprehensive plans to change this city and bring it into the, third, the 21st century. I have a vision for this city. The vision is that New Orleans will be a clean, beautiful, safe city, a, safe, a city where mothers have no fear to walk their babies in the evening in strollers, where people aren't riding around the block two times before they get out of their car in the evening for fear of their safety, an infrastructure renaissance, a world-class workforce development. At night, the lights are on. When it rains, the pumps work, and the streets are smooth. It won't be easy, but in my administration, failure is not an option. Councilman Cantrell. Thank you, thank you so much um, to WWL and of course um, the Committee for a Better New Orleans and, and y, uh, WYES. Um, I have the vision to lead, you know, the courage to stand up, and the compassion to care about our people as I've demonstrated. I have been able to listen to our community, to our people, build consensus and deliver real results, and results that you can see, touch, and just overall experience. I wanna bring our people hope, protection, and the opportunities that I know our people need. No training wheels needed here. I have a proven track record of getting things done. I have been an effective councilwoman, and of course, a grassroots leader, an executive manager. I'm prepared for this job. I want to be your next mayor so that we collectively can link all of our people to the real opportunity and growth that we know our people need. I'm LaToya Cantrell. I'm asking for your vote so that we can get the job done. Thank you. Thank you, and right on cue, by the way. All right, Judge Bagnaris, your closing statement. Thank you. Every New Orleanian knows the commitment that you must make in order to live and work here. Our community is confronted by natural disasters, by drain pumps that don't work, by violent crime, by broken streets, and by a drainage system that is deteriorating. But we are a resilient people. We are a resilient people. It's in our culture. We must not allow the outsiders who simply talk about our music, our food, and our parades to prevail. We have to know that it's our people who are the greatest strength of our city, our people. And you deserve a mayor who will work for you, a mayor who uh, will not try to promise you the moon uh, and then sell you out to the highest bidder. New Orleans has everything it needs to be successful except a government that is going to get the job done. As your mayor, I will get the job done. Judge Thank Bag you. Michael Bagneris, number 33. Please vote for me on Saturday. Thank you, Judge Bagneris, Councilman Cantrell, Judge Charbonnet. Thank you very much. We want to thank you for taking part in tonight's debate. We would also like to thank our partners at the Committee for a Better New Orleans, our crew and partners from Yes Productions and WYES TV Channel 4 for their production support. Uh, all channel 12 as well. Also, this program will be rebroadcast tonight at 10 p.m. on Channel 12. And thank you, of course, for tuning in. And remember, the polls open Saturday at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. Don't forget to vote. Have a great night.